Module 2 lets us learn cooperative learning strategies. Hello, greetings of the day. Dear learners, in Module 1, we have learned about the concept, characteristics, elements, and theoretical background of cooperative learning. Continue your good work in this week also. Now we are entering into the second week of our course with module 2 of our course. We will start this week with a very interesting and important topic that is difference between cooperative and collaborative learning. Uh, you will find these terms are used interchangeably at many places in our surroundings. No doubt there are some similarities between these two interrelated terms but here it is also very important to understand the key differences between these two terms. I mean to say the differences between cooperative learning and collaborative learning. So here are the difference between these two approaches. The first column is showing the point of difference, the second about collaborative approach and third one about the cooperative approach. So here is the first difference. It is related to the roots of these two approaches. Collaborative learning has roots in UK and roots of cooperative learning are in USA. Both differ on their epistemological base also. Collaborative learning is based on group work which has its base on theories derived from studies about the social nature of human knowledge. Cooperative learning is based on motivational, social cohesion and cognitive perspective which includes cognitive development and cognitive elaboration theories. About these theories we have learned in detail in module 1. Then comes the nature. Nature of collaborative approach is informal and nature of cooperative learning is formal. There is another difference related to nature that is nature of work in both the approaches. Collaborative approach focus on common inquiry by members on a task and in cooperative learning nature of work is delegation of tasks to the group members. In collaborative approach, no specific training is given and it is assumed that they have these skills but in cooperative learning for good results it's ensured that students receive some training about social skills or working in small groups before working in cooperative learning groups. Next point is types of task. Normally the task in collaborative approach are open and in form of complex questions. On the other side, in cooperative approach, group tasks are normally close-ended and planned one. Then comes the implementation. Basically, collaborative approach is more used at higher level and cooperative learning is used mainly at foundation level. The next point is related to the responsibility for structuring activities in both approaches. In collaborative, students organize their efforts between themselves, so activities are group structured. In cooperative approach, each student assigned a specific role and this is structured by the teacher for smooth working of groups. The next point is source of material. In collaborative work, students share source material among themselves to complete the activity. In cooperative approach, teachers supply information to the students, the basic information to read and analyze. Students work on that information. Students try to construct the knowledge or let the students know where are the resources to be used. The next point is 
related to monitoring in collaborative approach the activity is not monitored by the teacher although they can help when assistance is required by the group but in case of cooperative learning teachers mainly observe the working of groups listen and intervene whenever necessary in the groups the next point is related to assessment in collaborative approach students assess their own individual and group performance and in cooperative learning students submit their work at the end of the lesson for evaluation or assessment this is mainly done by the teacher himself or with the help of group members another important difference is with respect to success in collaborative work success depends on individual's strengths whereas in cooperative work the success of the group depend upon the efforts of everyone involved in a task the next point is additional resources as we have learned about source of material in both approaches in earlier part of this video the same procedure is followed in case of additional resources too in collaborative approach students obtain additional resources by themselves but in cooperative learning teacher provides or guides for the different additional resources to the students then comes the role of teacher in collaborative approach no defined role for teacher whereas in case of cooperative teacher has well defined role which we call as a guide or facilitator in classroom work the teacher play an important role in pre active stage but as the group work starts the role of teacher is decreasing the next point related to work submission in collaborative approach students retain work to complete their further work on the other hand in case of cooperative approach at the end students submit work for the evaluation or assessment the next point is structure in these two approaches in collaborative approach there is no fixed structure no fixed time any time students work together in case of cooperative learning students work together in a small groups on a given task in a structured activity which is planned one so these were the main differences between these two approaches this will enhance our understanding on cooperative learning and help to understand our next learning which is related to various strategies of cooperative learning so for more information you can see these references so dear friends continue your quest for learning we will learn together and play our role in making a change in our classrooms and society through implementation of cooperative learning good luck to all of you